Hi, I'm Tom Hackett, and today's subject is interfaces. If you're not first, you're last. Now, you probably recognize that movie uh, reference from Talladega Nights and the character uh, Ricky Bobby, who is the race car driver. That was his motto, if you're not first, you're last. And I was thinking about that, I love the movie, but I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, that applies exactly to the interfaces that are on SOCs today. And, uh, and then that caused me to think of, uh, it, it, and the interfaces are so important today, but you know, they've always been important. Because I can think back to about 20 years ago to a computer that I bought. And um, uh, the reason I bought that computer had to do with interfaces. And last year I got a new computer, and the selection I made there also had to do with its interfaces. Not the processor speed, not how much disk it had, not how much memory. It was about the interfaces. Okay, so let's go back 20 years and imagine the computer that I bought at that time was a, a, a desk side computer, right, with a fast processor and all that. And, um, but uh, the reason I bought that, that, that computer was that uh, my old computer would not support a scanner. And uh, before the digital photography, that's how you got your pictures in the computer was by scanning them. And uh, my wife wanted a scanner. I said, okay, great, honey, I'll go buy a scanner, hook it up to our computer, and we'll be good to go. And she said, uh, oh, w is that really the smart thing to do? Maybe it'd be better just to buy a new computer, you know, along with the scanner. And I said, no way, no way. It's, so, it's a simple matter to add a, add a scanner to a computer, or so I thought. And um, so what I did was I went down to the store, I bought the scanner, and reading all the specs, I realized it needed a USB, get this, 2.0 interface. Because at the time, 20 years ago, USB 1.0 was the, was the thing. So I bought the scanner and I bought the USB card, plugged it in here, hooked it up, didn't work. Oh, because to, to run the USB 2.0, it also required the newer version of Windows that supported that interface. So I go back to the store, I buy my Windows disk, come back home, and try to load it up, and that's where I ran into trouble. So much trouble, I ended up being on the phone with Microsoft for four hours to try to get the thing loaded. And the whole upshot of that was I realized I had a disk problem in the old computer, a latent problem that I hadn't run into. And um, so, go back to the computer store the third time, and now I buy the most expensive uh, disk application utilities that I could find, because I really wanted to get to the bottom of that problem. And uh, a few days later, the net result was, you know, it wasn't actually the disk at all, it was the disk controller, which was soldered on the motherboard, which brought me back to the store to buy the brand new computer, just like my wife told me to do to begin with. So anyway, I got a new computer because I needed that interface, the USB 2.0. And I got there by a unforeseen set of circumstances. Okay, 20 years later, last year, I'm ready to upgrade my uh, laptop for work. And so I wanted the thing to be as small and thin as possible because I travel a lot. And so in order to get that, I realized, you know, the thing that really enables small thin laptops is the new USB Type-C connector. Because with that Type-C connector, you only need one port. You know, one cable coming out of that goes to your monitor. That same cable carries the power. Uh, all your external um, interfaces, all your USBs and Ethernet and everything can go through like a hub, mine's a monitor hub, and feeds down through that single cable. And so that enables the case to be super small. So I knew that I wanted a laptop that had the USB Type-C uh, connector on it. Um, I also, for the solid state drive that's in there, you know, it wasn't good enough just to have a PCI Express connected solid state drive. I knew that with the, the current interfaces that what I really needed was an NVM Express uh, interface because that gives you basically like twice the throughput of a solid state drive just connected with plain old PCI Express. So I know I needed that and I also wanted the latest like low power DDR interface as well. So that's what I went shopping for and it took me to the computer. You know what I didn't care about at all was the processor speed because Frankly, for years and years now, what difference has that really made, right? And if anything, I got a processor that was a little slower because I thought, that's got to be better for battery life, which was the other big concern. But over this 20-year time period, 
the thing that actually drove my purchase decisions were the interfaces. Now those change over time, but it's basically the interfaces that kind of make or break the product. And the manufacturers that are first to deliver these breakthrough interfaces, those are the ones that win. And what we've seen like in the smartphone market today is if you look at all the profit that's made by smartphone companies, you find that uh, if this pie chart here is profit, we got one manufacturer that gets about 78% of the profit, another manufacturer that gets about 25% of the profit, and then everybody else fights for this last 5%. And you get into one of the winning positions you know, by being first to market with uh, the right set of interfaces, the right user experience uh, that makes the difference in their lives, just like this did for me. So that highlights the importance of the interfaces. Uh, and Cadence makes a business out of high quality application specific interfaces uh, for your mobile interfaces, for your high performance computing, for automotive, for Internet of Things. So, for today's Whiteboard Wednesday, I'm Tom Hackett.